Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to your Lake Ford Guide. You know, one of the most effective baits in the winter time is going to be a jerk bait without a doubt. Basically from fall till spring, if you don't have a jerk bait on the deck of your boat, you're probably going to be wrong. So today we're going to give you all the details on how to go about catching really big bass throughout the winter on jerk baits. Good one. Jerk baiting. Jerk. jerk baits. Man, such an effective tool. And I'm telling you guys right now, if you haven't taken the time to put a jerk bait in your hand and really learn it, you really owe it to yourself if you're into bass fishing to do so. There is absolutely something about the quality of a jerk bait, the erratic nature of it, the way when you twitch it, it darts side to side. There's something in that that bass just can't help but lash out at. And when you got those nine points of death with those three treble hooks hanging off the bottom of it, a lot of times you're gonna hook that fish when he lashes out at it. They don't always eat it. You'll see a lot of fish, especially in the winter time under post frontal conditions, tougher conditions, colder water conditions. You'll see them wearing it on the outside of their face is what I call it. They'll just come up and slap at it. They won't even put it in their mouth, but you'll go ahead and catch them anyway. Uh, it just draws that reaction and it's such an effective tool for getting a hook into the fish that reacts to it. So let's go ahead and go over all the gear that you're gonna need to be successful throwing a jerk bait. First thing is the jerk baits themselves. And I'm not normally a very complicated color guy. I'm a guy that carries three or four colors of plastics, uh, two or three colors of jigs. Like I don't really go in depth on having a bunch of variety of color. All in a jerk bait, it jerks and pauses and they stare at it a long time. And a lot of times the color itself and the way it flashes is what will draw their attention on a given day under different watercolor conditions, under different light conditions. Uh, color is really an important thing on a jerk bait to have a wide variety of colors. Let me walk you through some of the ones that I actually carry. The first ones I'm going to show you are what I call my chrome series. And, and, and you'll see what I mean. They all have reflective qualities, chrome type qualities. Now this may not show up on camera very well, but that's a very shiny, almost like a natural green shad type color with a lot of chrome flash to it. This right here, this is a new, new deal by Sixth Sense where they're putting these reflective dots on them. As you can see, those have a lot of flash to them. Then of course, there's one of the old, all across the Southern United States, especially in East Texas standbys, Gold Reactor, a gold chrome jerk bait with an orange belly. That's a great color to throw as well. Next color we're gonna talk about is gonna be our translucent colors. Here's a natural shad translucent color. You can kind of see, yeah, hopefully that shows up on camera. You can see all the way through that bait. Here's another great translucent color. I like this one, a little bit of purple or lavender on top, a little bit of yellow or chartreuse on bottom, translucent body. And one more, one of the most traditional colors that I really like. This is probably the most popular translucent color across the country. This one right here by Six Sense is called Ghost Pro Blue, uh, but it's ghost sexy shad for other companies. It's just a ghost shad color with a blue back, a light blue color, grayish back. Very, very popular color. Probably the most popular color jerk bait right there. Then of course you gotta have your more opaque uh, colors, your solid colors. This one's like a Tennessee shad color. Green back, white body. Love that bait right there. Then you got your off the wall stuff, your reds. This one's actually called ditch weed by Six Sense. And I gotta show you both sides of that because it's red on one side and yellow on the other. And also, this is one reason I like this particular bait right here, and I believe this one's called 4K Shad, but not only does it have the chrome reflective qualities, it also has the opaque solid body color qualities as well. Kind of combines the best of both worlds. But as you can see, I have a big variety of colors. And now you're gonna wanna know, well, when do you throw which colors? Well, generally speaking, the more solid colors and the more bright colors are gonna be better under dark, darker days and muddier water conditions. The more translucent colors, the more natural uh, shadow paint colors are gonna be better on clear water or sunny days. Hey, if I've got clear water like we have today and I've got sunny conditions like we have today, then I'm almost guaranteed I'm gonna throw some type of translucent color. You can see the most natural color with translucent qualities, that's the one that's tied on today because we've got clear water and sunny skies. Now, if I have clear water, but maybe I've got cloudy skies, hey, I'm gonna wanna go to the more opaque shad type colors like this one right here. Same time, if I have just lightly stained water, but sunny conditions, again, this is a great combination. Basically, what you're looking for 
is, is a percentage of light penetration. Uh, if you're dealing with sunny conditions, you got a little bit of stained water, then you need something that's not quite translucent but still looks natural. If you've got darker conditions and a little bit stained water, you're going to need to go that much further into something a little more off the wall or bright or easy to see. Hey, and if you've got dirty water and dark conditions, you can go ahead and get crazy as you want. And you guys can laugh about that goofy, ugly color right there all you want to, but it flat out catches them. In fact, when it first came out, what do you got, BJ? Well, you got a little jerk jerk fish. I didn't mean to interrupt. It's okay. Translucent color, sunny day, clear water, and BJ's got him a jerk bait fish. Come on in the boat, Han. Here, give them a look at that one real quick before you take them off the hook, and I'll get back to doing what I'm doing. Eating that jerk bait just like that. Old translucent natural shag color, perfect. And all these jerk baits that I just showed you guys are six cents provoke 106 X jerk baits. They have a great selection of colors over there. And when you go over there and order anything from sixcentsfishing.com, of course, you know, you can punch in that code, your Lake Fort guide, you'll get a 10% discount on all orders. And that is linked. <laughs> that is linked in the description, of course. That might be the best sponsor plug in the history of fishing, BJ. I don't know how many guys have done a sponsor plug while being kissed unknowingly by a fish. <laughs> That might be a first ever in the industry, bro. I don't know. You know, we're just doing big things out here. Back to the color talk. Basically, you want to go down that sky. Oh, the dishweed color. Yeah, laugh at that ugly color all you want to. Hey, I'm telling you, it catches the heck out of them. In fact, when it first came out, I put it in the Billy bag, which was a seasonal selection bag at the time. And one of the customers that bought that actually caught a 13 pounder on that bait right there at a little small lake around here in East Texas. But yeah, hopefully I cover that. Drop me some questions in the comments. If you have more questions on color selection, I'll let you know. You basically have to play around with color selection based on the light penetration qualities of the conditions you're in, be it water clarity or sky conditions. Today we've got clear water for around here, very clear water and bright sky. So obviously we're going to the extreme of the most translucent and natural patterns that we can find. So let's talk about the rest of your gear that you're going to need to throw a jerk bait effectively. Hey, you need a rod with a lot of bend, a lot of play in it. Uh, you're going to need, the rod that I throw it on is a 6.9 medium Lux series from Six Sense Fishing. You don't need a lot of sensitivity in a jerk bait rod. You're not going to feel a lot of the bites anyway, but, but you're going to hook those fish and you almost don't want to feel the bite. If you feel them bite it, a lot of times as fishermen, we'll have a tendency to go ahead and jerk and you're going to miss or barely skin hook and lose a lot of jerk bait fish if you have too much sensitivity sensitivity in a rod. So having a rod with a lot of bend in it, like a 6.9 medium, that's going to be important. The line that I like to throw it on, a lot of people throw it on 10 pound fluorocarbon. I'll throw it on 12 pound. I re rarely go below 12 pound. The reason that is, like today, we're fishing it around grass edges and we're having to rip it out of that grass. I don't want to do that on 10 pound line. I'm going to end up snapping 10 pound line. 12 pound line, I just feel better about. I also, when I'm fishing these shallow jerk baits, like the 106X right here, uh, I will go ahead and throw it on mono a lot of times. Today, we're actually throwing this on 12 pound Berkeley Big Game Mono. Uh, as simple as it gets. I like the added stretch in mono when I hook a fish on a jerk bait. Uh, and if I'm not trying to get the bait as deep as possible, I prefer to have mono on it. There are situations where I need to get the bait as deep as I can, or I'm going to go to an even deeper jerk bait, something along the lines of a Mega Bass uh, Pointer 1 Plus, something like that. Then on those cases, when I'm trying to achieve maximum depth, I will go ahead and throw 12 pound fluorocarbon on those jerk baits. As far as a reel goes, I actually do prefer to throw it on a high speed gear ratio reel. And the reason why is I don't really impart action on a jerk bait with a reel hemp. And I'll show you the retrieve here in a little bit, but we're twitching. If you look at my boy BJ behind me, if y'all can see that, he's just twitching his hands. He's twitching his hands, he's picking up his slack with his reel handle. He's really never moving the bait while by turning the reel. The only time he moves the bait by turning the reel is either to reel fish in or to reel his bait in and get it out there for another cast. In both of those two situations, it's better to get it in as fast as possible. High speed gear ratio reel is great. Loose Hypermag 75 to 1 is the one that I use. Love a loose Hypermag. Hey, a jerk bait is kind of an awkward bait to throw, especially in the wind. It's a very, very light bait with a very odd shape. It can be easy to throw at times. It can also be difficult to throw at times. For that reason, I do like to use a high quality reel, a very light reel. That loose Hypermag will throw light baits as good or better than any reel I've ever put in my hands on the market. 
let's talk about the types of areas that you're going to throw a jerk bait now there's a lot of different areas that you can really throw a jerk bait in the winter time a lot of our fish do suspend in the winter time it's one of the reasons a jerk bait works so effectively but there's almost nowhere you can't throw a jerk bait you can throw it on main lake or secondary points around timber you can throw it around dock pilings you can throw it around bridge aprons and pilings it excels in those situations uh rock rip wrap throw it out in front of that great there or like today we're up here we're literally it's a tough day today the fish seem to be really spread out we're catching one at a time no groups and we are literally just drifting down covering an outside grass line and throwing that jerk bait along that grass line so grass wood concrete sea walls docks there's no type of cover you can't throw a jerk bait around and it'd be effective this time of year and as we progress from fall on into spring the types of areas that you want to throw them around <clears throat> the types of areas that you want to target will change uh, today this lake that we have doesn't have just a tremendous amount of bottom contour features big creek channel swings or anything like that it does have a lot of vegetation going down the shoreline so that's what we're concentrating on at lake fork right now i would be throwing a jerk bait a lot around bridge pilings and aprons i would also throw them around timber around creek bends if i saw the fish suspending on my electronics around those creek bends and just to verify a little bit more about the power of the jerk bait especially around here and especially at lake fork Hey, the last two Bassmaster Elite Series events that have been fished on Lake Fork, one was fished in May and one was fished in November. And they were both, one, primarily using a jerkbait, one by Brandon Cobb in May, one recently here by Patrick Walters in November. If that doesn't speak volumes to the effectiveness of a jerkbait in this region that we live in, I don't know what does. You can't get much different patterns than May and November and yet both of those tournaments at the very top end of our sport were won on a jerk bait at Lake Ford. All right, let's get up here real quick and talk to you briefly about the retrieve. All right, jerk bait fishing. It doesn't always have to be a long cast. It just depends on what you're covering. Here we're covering grass lines. We are making longer casts. If you're target oriented, if you're target oriented around bridges, docks, timber, that other stuff, you can actually throw it and not make a long cast and just more important to be accurate and target oriented with your cast. But the key deal, there's a couple key things about fishing a jerk bait. And the first one is gonna be your twitching motion. So when I throw this bait out here, and some people like to reel it down a little bit, I just start twitching it, especially on these shallow ones. But when I twitch it, one thing I want you to notice, and one thing I want you to pay attention to when you're twitching it, is as you twitch it, you wanna make sure that the end of your twitch is paired up with the end of your slack. So right as you hit the end of your twitching motion, that's when your slack should get tight. You do not want your slack to get tight here and keep twitching to here. Do not pull through the slack. I see so many customers do this when they're fishing a jerkbait, and that jerkbait is not gonna have that side to side darting erratic action that you want. As far as the cadence of it goes, that's gonna vary depending on the time of year, even depending on the day, the water temperature, the water temperature trend, all those things are gonna change potentially the cadence at which you're twitching the bait. Today, we're kind of doing a one at a time, boom. Maybe a boom, boom. Just a one at a time is what BJ's been doing and having the most uh, effectiveness on. A lot of times I'll hit, a, I'll hit them with a twitch, 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 twitch. Just a random erratic cadence. I'll give them kind of all different things to look at. And after I've gotten a couple bites, I'll tend to focus in on which cadence it is exactly that they're hitting the most. And I'll try to focus on that one. Some days it is just an erratic cadence like that all day is the best way to go about it. But that's the main thing, guys. Make sure when you're twitching that bait, you can play with the cadence, you can play with the intensity of it. Generally speaking, the colder the water is, uh, the, the less intense that I want to twitch it. So in the summertime, I may be just twitching the heck out of it like this. But in the wintertime, it's going to be much more subtle, like that. Other than that, play with the cadence, play with the rhythm, play with the timing, play with all those things so you get a couple bites and get some confidence in what you're doing. And then remember what those are, pay attention to it, and stick to it. Hook set and fighting a fish, very important. We got probably the lightest gear that most of us are going to use bass fishing. 6.9 medium rod, this is my least powered rod. 12 pound line is some of the lighter line that I'm going to fish around East Texas. Uh, if you look at these hooks on these baits, these treble hooks, if you think about it, if you only have one of those points in a fish, that is a tiny, tiny little hook to have in a sometimes 7, 8, 9, 10 pound bass, right? Or even 13 like my boy that caught it on the dish week. That's a little bitty hook if you've only got one in them. You cannot horse these fish to the boat. You cannot go jerking on them when you set the hook. You'll lose a ton of them. So as I'm twitching, twitch, 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 
when I get a bite, I just want to pull to the side. And it can be either side. You twitch, 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 bite, pull to the side. You'll pull, let it load up, and then start reeling. Go ahead and dig that reel in, get that rod loaded up good, and then play that fish. And one thing that BJ heard me say to him earlier, and he lost one. He lost one before, and then the next time he had one on, I told him as he was playing that fish, be ready to feed it some line. Get your thumb on the spool. He clicks his thumb, thumbs the spool, and as the fish pulls, he lightly lets line out. He doesn't just let it go. He doesn't let his bend go out of his rod, but he fed that fish some line when it went to bulldogging it. It's gonna be important that you play these fish a little bit tenderly when you're fighting them on a jerk bait. You do not have the equipment, okay, to horse them. The lighter action rod, the lighter line is all designed to help you land these fish on these smaller hooks, but it's not gonna do you much good if you try to pull them to the boat as hard as you can. You've got to keep the bend in your rod, but you've also gotta take your time and let these fish run a little bit when you're landing them on a jerk bait. Hey, last but certainly not least, certainly not least, you're gonna want to take the split ring off. They come, let's see if I got one with a split ring on it here. Here's one with a split ring on it. They're gonna come with a great little square split ring. I love the split rings that six inch uses on their baits, that little square split ring. When I'm throwing a jerk bait, I'm gonna wanna go ahead, I take those off and you can see this one here. Took the split ring off and also tied a loop knot. Hopefully y'all can see that little loop right there. What that's gonna do is that's gonna give that bait a lot more freedom and it's gonna increase the erraticness of that action. It's gonna make that bait dart side to side and dance that much more, giving it that much more of that magic juice that jerk baits have that just somehow make fish that don't wanna do nothing, lash out and bite and then get caught. So there you go guys, that's how you fish a jerk bait as you can see by some of those fish catches. It is a extremely, extremely effective bait. It's always a player on the top level of the game on the tours, uh, if you watch those. And hey, it's been a great tool for me over the last couple years around here in East Texas. I uh, really appreciate you guys watching that. I sincerely hope that this helps you guys catch more and bigger fish. Six inch fishing, linked in the description. Go get some of those jerk baits. Go get that six nine medium Lux series rod and uh, y'all go get to jerking on some jerk jerks. Hey, you say that, BJ? You're not even paying attention, are you? Jerk jerks. Jerking on the jerk jerks. Boy, you're really doing a good job of kicking into the closing of this deal here. I, I wouldn't listen. I gotta be honest. You caught me off guard. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again, folks. I really need to work on my list of friends. And with that, we'll close it out. Thanks once again for watching. We'll see you next time right here on your Lake Fort Guide.